You are here to be a producer and not a consumer. And I think that's the underlying theme between this. Most people use this as a, a tool to waste time, right? They are just consuming. They're watching all the other people, whether they're friends and family or whether they're other influencers around the country or world, that is all you just absorbing. Now we need to switch it and you need to be the producer, right? Your job on social media is to show your life, to show your business, to network, to learn. That is what we're talking about. And I'd say there's there's two parts to this, but it, the underlying theme is let's be productive with this tool. Welcome back to another episode of The Donkey and the Bee with your host, Brett and Laura Schott-Havis, where we talk all things marriage, entrepreneurship, and finances. Yeah. And we love talking about finances. That's my favorite thing to talk I about. I know. It's one of the best things to talk about. I know. Yeah. So we want to come at this from the perspective of how do you, a husband and a wife, how do you get on the same page with finances? And today we're going to talk about some things that we cut out of our life specifically in order for us to make more money and ultimately grow our business, get to financial freedom quicker and build our net worth. So there are many things to cut out of your life if you want financial freedom. Um, I think this is just one that was, is prevalent in our culture now that everyone uses this daily, hourly, and probably sometimes every minute. And so uh, I think it's important to kind of reframe your mindset on how you look at this specific thing that we're going to talk about today. So we're talking about cutting social media, cutting social media out of your life and really taking back your time. And we use social media heavily. So I want to unpack this because there is a distinction. We're not saying never use it because we actually, I think I probably use it a good amount, a lot, but I use it in a certain way. And that's what I want to talk about today. Are you the consumer or are you the producer? Are you there just to soak up um, everyone else's content? Are you just following everyone and watching all this stuff for entertainment and not being productive? in your business, in, in your income, and in growing your skills, or I want to talk to you today about sh cutting that, switching the script, and now being a producer, now using social media to produce more income and grow relationships and things like that. So I think if people were to look at their own way, how they utilize social media, they would say, oh, I'm probably the consumer, because I think most people use it to waste the time away is pretty much what it is, right? Yeah. Keep yourselves I'm, entertained. Exactly. I'm stressed out at my job. I'm going to go home. I'm going to watch social media for two hours to get my mind off of how stressed I am about my job. Yeah. So there's so much power in social media and there, it's an amazing tool. So you just need to reframe this as this is not Netflix. This is a business tool and it's a very powerful business tool and you can waste your time on social media, or you can be very productive on social media. And the people that have are using this properly, they've really gone through a series of steps that I want to pack to say, here's how I can leverage social media to, you know, 5x my income and grow my net worth and hit financial freedom. And there's so much opportunity you can use this, this tool for. So we've talked about the theory of why we think social media should be cut out in order to make more money. So I, I love the theory of it, but I think getting real with it and actually telling people what we actually did step by step on how to get this out of our life, I think will be more uh, useful for our listeners so that they can understand, oh, hey, yeah, I know it's bad. I should I should be actually the producer, not consumer, but how do I go by doing that? So uh, we actually have four steps, four yeah. different steps that we took to to cut social media out so that we are not the consumer, that we were the producer of the content. So the first step, this is probably the easiest step, for me at least, it was the easiest step, was unfollowing 99% of the friends that you have on your social media. Doesn't matter what it is, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of the things, right? Threads, X, all of them. Uh, unfollow 99% of the people. So to, to clarify on this, here's the theme behind it. Unfollow everyone that you see for entertainment, right? And that's probably most of your people, even including friends and, and, and family and, you know, you can keep mom and stuff in there. But most of those people that you just like, oh, they're just posting their trip to the gym and vacation and all that kind of stuff, cut all of those people. You don't need to see any of that. That is entertainment. But keep the people 
that you have for networking and you have for you follow for for business growth and things like that. If it can lead to making you money in in relationships or in skills, keep those. But everything else that is entertainment, cut all of those people. So, for example, uh, and the people who are listening, I probably did cut you. Sorry, um, <laughs> I cut most of the people out because I felt like it was distracting me from either building my skill set or mindset. Uh, in anything, right? In general. And then also it was distracting me from uh, posting my content and building my business. So I kept those influencers that are business minded, that are growth minded. So for instance, I still follow like Grant Cardone and my and Andy Frisella and Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Layla Hermosi, Alex Hermosi, those type of people who for me personally, I feel really build and develop my mindset toward entrepreneurship and just being the best version of myself. So that's building myself. So that's why I keep that. Other individuals who maybe, like you said, post, you know, of their dog and of their kids and that kind of stuff. I think it's great. That's great. You post those things. I feel like it's just a filler for me that I didn't need to see. So cutting most of those people out. So I'm only, when I'm on social media, I'm there to post is really what I'm doing. I'm there to post and maybe I'll scroll through a little bit and I'll learn something about mindset or I'll learn something about business while I'm posting. And so that's the way that we go about this. Yeah. So you kind of talked a little bit about step two. If you cut 99% of the people, then you have almost nothing. All you have is like paid ads. Yeah. So now you need to add more people in. Who are you going to follow? And you're following now, you're adding people not for entertainment, but for education, for -hmm. developing skills or networking. I'd really put it into those three things. You're going to grow your business with the people you're going to follow because they're teaching you, they're posting about these things, or perhaps they are more local people in your community that are other business owners or something like that, that you are going to follow them. Maybe it is for the uh, entertainment kind of stuff, but it's strategic. You're learning about their life. So when you come into contact, you can build relationships, you can chit chat with them. And you're really there to network in that space. So you mentioned some of these people that you kept in, you know, that are influencers, business people. And if you don't have those people, then that's what step two would be. Add the people to who you're following that have these kind of things that you are now following, not for entertainment, but for education. I'd say not just for education. I would also say to to build your mindset, which I guess could be correlated to education. But I think if you're seeing other people doing these grand things in their life, I think it's also inspirational, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're seeing sure. them go on their yacht or speak in front of thousands of people or do these things that you're pushing yourself to to do and become. And I think that's where it is. It's like inspiring you to keep pursuing what you're doing in business and in life so that you can get to that next level. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, so step three is now use this as a business tool. You are here to be a producer and not a consumer. And I think that's the underlying theme between this. Most people use this as a a tool to waste time, right? They are just consuming. They're watching all the other people, whether they're friends and family or whether they're other influencers around the country or world, that is all you just absorbing. Now we need to switch it and you need to be the producer, right? Your job on social media is to show your life, to show your business, to network, to learn. That is what we're talking about. And I'd say there's there's two parts to this, but it, the underlying theme is let's be productive with this tool. So part of it is you putting it out there, you posting, and it is okay for you to post your entertainment stuff, like your vacations and your family, all those kind of things. You can put that out there. I just don't want you watching other people's stuff doing that, right? They can watch you and they can follow you. That's totally good. But that's part of it is you putting the content out there, you being productive, showing the personal stuff and showing the business stuff. Then the other part of it is you consuming but let's reframe it in you are consuming productive information. You are per, you are consuming education. You are consuming um, content on people you want to network with. You are consuming inspiration, like you said. This is you using the tool as a business tool instead of a time-wasting tool. All right, so step four. This is super important. Yeah. There is a probably 25% of people out there who are saying, well, yeah, Brett and Laura, that's cool, but I don't have social media, so I'm good right? So what we say to you is, okay, what are you replacing that time with? And I think the majority of the people would say they're replacing that social media time with TV. So this is not an excuse for you to go out there and watch TV 30 minutes to however long, four hours a day. 
Use that time to build the skills. I think that's super important. Building your skills. Don't time waste. I think people, I don't think people understand how much time they're wasting on social media and TV. Hours a day. And hours a day accumulates to how many hours a week? How many hours a month? How many hours a year you're on social media? When you could be reading books, you could be listening to podcasts or listening to these people who are inspirational on these social media outlets. And that's building your mindset, building your skills. So don't watch TV, use social media for productivity to increase your brand, your personal brand or your business brand. And capitalizing on that, that you can do that, that you can utilize this tool to build yourself, build your business, uh, and ultimately just expand your knowledge and uh, increase to that next level uh, in your life. So I think for me personally, I probably, when I did this and cut everything, probably saved about an extra two hours per day. And so the way I think of it, instead of me working five hours, or excuse me, instead of me working five days a week, I'm now equivalently working six days a week, right? Maybe more than six days a week. And that's really because I've taken back that wasted time during the work week. And instead of working 40, but I'm really working 30 or 25 or something like that, now I'm working that true 40 and it feels like I am way more productive. I'm getting so much more stuff done. And then... I am also compounding that with, I'm taking this extra time, not only to be productive, but to learn, to leverage the tool that social media is, going on YouTube and, and learning all these different skills of investing and compound interest and, and all these different niches for, for real estate, right? There's so many different things that you can do. So take back that time because it's at least 10 hours a week. I would say some people it's 20 hours a week of wasted time on social media. If you had 20 more hours of productivity, I mean, that's almost like, 13 months in the year of working instead of 12, right? Like you just got so much further ahead of, of everybody else. And you can use this to really hit your financial targets really with the intention that I'm getting there faster and now I'm taking my time back. Now I can come back and be the husband, be the wife, be the father or mother that I wanna be because I've hit my financial goals. I'm making more money and I can really concentrate on my days off instead of worrying about my finances and fighting with my spouse because you don't have enough money I have increased my income and now I've taken my time back to really concentrate on the family time. And to piggyback on that, if you have an extra 20 hours of productivity, you know what that also does is that builds your confidence in whatever you're trying to produce. So I think with a lot of individuals, when they are not producing anything or they, they're not really doing anything with their life and all they're doing is watching people on social media do other things with their life, then they get depressed oh my gosh, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. It's that comparison game, right? Like comparison is a thief of joy. So I think if you're looking at that less, putting it to the side, focusing on what you are producing and what you are putting out there, you're not only inspiring other people who are watching your content, you're also inspiring yourself and you're actually getting more confident. You're building your confidence slowly through those just few hours a day that you're cutting that. Absolutely. Well, that is it for today's talk. Cut social media out of your life on the time wasting, get more productive, hit your financial goals, take charge of your family and marriage. I will see you all on the next one.